What's going on guys and for the win here we are back with our franchise mode as the San Jose Sharks and here we are in free agency after a, a pretty successful draft there getting a, a few uh, new elite uh, prospects under our belt hopefully to start uh, building more for the future as we make our push for the Stanley Cups and now in free agency we have a tough cap situation to deal with Joe Pavelski probably not going to be able to re be resigned Joe Thornton, don't know. We might be able to get him much, much later if he doesn't get signed and prices drop a lot, but I don't know. He's still very serviceable. I think a team might pick him up, but I'll keep an eye on that as uh, we kind of go through free agency. But first things first, we need, we need something on this team. And I was doing a bit of thinking about what we might have to do or what we could do to kind of get things going here. And uh, when it comes to lines... Like, we only kind of have two centers, and they would also be well-serviced as wing. I'm hoping that uh, this Kane situation... Well, it looks like he's not here. Hold on. Oh, man. As I was saying, I'm hoping that's not actually real, but it may very well be I don't know why though he doesn't I checked he doesn't have any statistical minuses I really don't know what the deal is with that but if that's real that's pretty bad <laughs> so we're gonna hope it's not but yeah who knows man but yeah so first line I think we might go with with hurdle on first line Oh, then we need a shooter. So that's the thing. It's either Couture. We can go Couture too, but then we don't have a center for a second line. Unless we could somehow get Thornton back. But still, I don't even think that's a great idea. Trading Braun and then picking up Stone, I think, could work out really well. It is yet another winger, sure. But then we could have Couture maybe first line. Since he shoots more, and I know he can have pretty good scoring seasons. Put Couture there with like Stone... And uh, probably Timo Meyer, then a second line of Hurdle, Nykvist, and Kane again. And then maybe we we're able to pick up Thornton for the third line, or Gambrell might be ready for third line. And then we might be able to get LeBanc back. Suomela might be a trade asset. And Donskoy is gone, but we should have other guys filling in and be able to pick up. Hopefully some guys who could play fourth line. Because if you look at it right now. We have 11 guys. If we sign Stone, we'll have a 12. But Goodrow would likely be better served as depth. If I can get Suomela, I can get him. But I'm going to have to wait on some of these just because of pricing and things like that. But... It, maybe Suomela will do that thing where he automatically signs for really cheap. Maybe LeBanc will too. We'll have to see. I would be okay with that, honestly. Until we can kind of sort of start to fix this cap situation or the cap goes up enough. Because that's kind of where we're at right now. It's pretty stuck. So, let's look to see what we can get if we trade Justin Braun. Maybe a second. Yoakam Ryan's tender, but with not much value. But we need some other kind of top six guy to fill in for Justin Braun. Because we need to free up space from somewhere, and it's likely going to come from there. Because really, what else can we do? We have a lot of money tied up in these three defensemen. So, let's see. Because I, I would like to get Stone. That would be pretty pretty handy to do. So, let's see who wants... Who is interested in Justin Braun? Buffalo Sabres are interested in him. I would go with that. And may, we might be able to pick up a top six guy from them. They don't have a second, which we might not be able to get for Justin Braun. Looking at his value. But let's check a few more places before we just pull the trigger. 
would rather go to the east here. They don't have a second either. Who has seconds? Philly, I think. Oh, yeah, it's going to be there. So, yeah, we can get a second and then maybe pick up a top six guy who's not too expensive. That's that's mostly what I'm looking at. Someone who wouldn't be too expensive for the top six. Hag or Hag, how did the, he's a lefty, which is not completely ideal. I don't like any of those guys. We could also pick one up in free agency. It just it will be more expensive though. That's the thing. So okay, not huge fan of that one. Penguins, they have crappy defensemen, but maybe they're okay. Uh, not really. Yeah, I'm also. I also need to look who's on the block, so I can't just check every team. Okay, do these guys have a cheap right-handed defenseman? Hard to say. Doesn't really look like it. The Leafs. <laughs> Looking for defenseman from the Leafs. Who thought? These guys have no right-handers, as I recall, so that is pretty much a no-go. Might have to be just someone from the West, as much as I don't like it. But we don't actually have too many options for a top six who's under contract. And at a, you know, very affordable contract. I'm looking for something pretty specific here. And it's not really coming in here. Yeah, these are all too expensive. I'm looking for a guy one and a half mil range, which just might not exist. Doesn't look like it uh, does. So let's look through everyone now. Even guys who don't want Justin Braun necessarily. Yikes. All right, this may take some time. All right, so maybe uh, something like this. Justin Braun, we're going to try to get back Dylan DeMello, who's on a very, uh, very good contract. And to be extended after that should only be around the 1.5 range. So he could be serviceable. If he works out, then we can uh, definitely use him for a while. Bring in DeMello back in Teal. For Braun, uh, we're not going to really be able to get a second. They don't want to give it up. And, uh, yeah, it's... It's just it would just be too tough to get and already with them not wanting Braun and not wanting to get up give up DeMello This might be too hard. I'll try for two-thirds, but I probably won't get that either so Yeah, that's not gonna go through so I'll remove the other third that looks a lot better with just the third in there So let's see what else we can get we can get back our own sixth here Or get back st. Louis as they might have a worse year So we could add a six in there get a three and a six back have a few more picks and be able to swoop up DeMello here. Let's see what they say to that. That still doesn't go through quite far off, really? A bit off now, okay. So I can get the third, I just have to send in a little bit more. I could use Yoakam Ryan. He's tendered. I would have to sign him. Let's see what he wants to uh, sign for, maybe, before I do that. Because I might want, nah, I, mean, I do, I might want to get him back just for depth again. Although he is pretty bad. He's just, you know, he's not going to, he's not going to jump back up if we're not playing him with his overall. Yeah, so you know what, let's throw Yoakam Ryan in there too. They do want him. That, with that value, that actually might enable us to get a pick in there. Maybe not the sixth. I'll try for it, but he is a bit more value and he is on the block. So let's see that. That'll work. Okay, cool. So yeah, traded away those two guys. Got DeMello back. Bit of a downgrade on our defense, but our defense did so well last year. And this is the cap world we live in. And now we have about 8 mil to work with of cap space. Which should enable us. To grab Mark Stone here. Now this is going to be tricky because you got to make him an offer that maybe other teams won't give him, but also an offer to where 
it's still, you know, within reason for us. So like maybe seven mil per year. I don't know if that'll be enough. I hope it will be. What other teams are interested in him? Philadelphia, Detroit, Chicago, Buffalo. Let's offer him that. Around that, or we'll have to go back with Pavelski, who will want a lot less, and then we can maybe get someone else too. But let's try that for Stone first. Let's give him seven by five. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I did see some people saying to go after Marner, but he's a restricted free agent tendered. So yeah, that's not, I'm not going to be able to grab him. Uh, unless, well, we can't even cough up the picks because we don't have the picks to give up for, especially for this year. We don't have our own first, et cetera, et cetera. So that is just, that wouldn't work like that. So that's one thing to do. Probably the main thing we're going to have to do with our tendered guys, we'll have to see if we can afford them. But we have to see if this one will go through first. So, yeah, let's advance up a bit. Hopefully he does sign. All right, I'm getting some new scouts. Just making our scouting uh, team better. There we are. There we are. Come on. Um, that is a really weird trade. <laughs> like that you don't even know if that's for sure going to be upgrade okay so we did get mark stone okay oof. that was close maybe i could have offered him exactly what the other teams were offering but uh, couldn't really take that chance could i <laughs> and we still have 1.5 mil to work with here pavelski still not signed thornton still not signed we're, I, we're i'll wait on that on jumbo because if no one signs him, that price will go down quite a bit. But there's no guarantee that no one will sign him. Or one of these will drop so far that we'll be able to afford giving up what the, uh, the offer sheet is. That would be interesting if that actually happened. But mostly, i got to have my eyes on Jumbo Joe. Pavelski, I think, is going to have to go elsewhere unless he lasts this whole time, too, and we can get him for very, very cheap. But I just don't see that happening with 1.5 mil of cap space. The only person I can maybe get close to that is Joe Thornton. So I'm going to keep my other guys tendered because I kind of have to right now. See if they'll uh, sign for reasonable prices. I do want to check one thing. Is there any? I just want to see if there's any way that we can free up further cap space. We are still listed as a champion team, so that's good. Probably also influenced by Mark Stone, or maybe that influences him actually signing with us. Let's see what kind of extension Dylan is going to want. I don't want to cough him up yet, especially after I got rid of Yoakam Ryan. And Dylan's, you know, a pretty solid defenseman, but he's probably going to want a bit. Yeah, he's going to want quite a bit. Around... Well, let's see. If I gave him that, I might be able to save a bit of money on him. Takes him up till he's 33. And that would be a bit of a movable contract. It's still a bit of a price increase, but not a huge one. It's only 3.3 something. But if I move it in any way, it'll go up. So that's something to consider for this year. Now, Melker Carlson's on two mil. Now, that's a lot for a player of his type. But he's also very good defensively. An extension would save us a lot of, or at least a good chunk of money. And he's a solid, uh, solid guy for us on the penalty kill. So I might take care of that now. Get him on that extension. Save as much money as possible. And he could play fourth line for a long time for it. Well, at least for another like four years or so. So I'm just going to do that. Just take care of that immediately. DeMello is going to be a bit more difficult unless he doesn't want a lot right now. And he really doesn't. Three years at around that price, which was which I was expecting. 
So we can get him for literally, mm, it'll have to be that for three years, which is, yeah, that'll kind of solidify our top six, at least for a little bit. But I want to see how he performs first. If it doesn't work out too well, then obviously you might not want to hold on to him. But yeah, other than that, we're about done. Now I'm just going to play kind of the waiting game here and see if Joe Thornton gets picked up. So I guess I'll sim just a couple weeks at a time because the price won't change much right now. It'll start changing way towards the end or when the season's about to begin. So going through this right now or checking like every week won't really do too much. And if he's if he's gone, he's gone. I can't really do much about that because, well, we only have 1.5 mil and everyone is kind of essential on this roster. Uh, LeBanc has been tendered. Ugh, I was really hoping he wouldn't be. That's a lot of money. I can get a second round pick. I don't have the salary to get him. But that's, I really can't compete with that. Let me just say, remind me in six days and stop real quick so I can check on a couple things. But him being offered that money means we're almost kind of screwed. Who else do we have tendered? I think we have one more guy tendered. He might do the automatic sign thing. Yeah, LeBanc. Yeah, rip. So yeah, well, I no, that's that's saying that's that wasn't his asking price. That's just how much money I have. Yeah, his asking price was around there, and they're offering him a good chunk that we literally just can't afford. Unless I free something up. But what the heck can I even do? Not much. At least not for this year. Unless we just completely hamstring ourselves. <laughs> Which I'm not willing to do. So yeah, I guess LeBanc is gone. But I will check free agency. Jumbo may or may not still be there. If he isn't, he isn't. He's still there. Price is around the same, so it's not getting picked up. The tendered guys may be interesting, but we're not gonna be able to get him for like super low. Jumbo's the only one who we might be able to get for that low ass price. But that's it. <laughs> That's literally it. So yeah, we're just gonna have to, I'm just gonna have to sim up here and hope that he doesn't get signed and we're gonna have to take the compensation for LeBanc because we just couldn't afford him really either way. So yeah, we're in a tough spot, but we might be able to make something happen. So I'm just gonna see you guys in a bit and see what happens. Okay, so as I expected, Jumbo did not last. And so we couldn't get him to a way, way cheaper contract. Someone else swooped him up. And we are unable to do much about it. What we can do is offer some entry levels to some young guys. I don't know how good they are, but no harm can come of it. And at this point, we can get Suomela to a very reasonable deal. And basically have to use him somewhere. He's a center, but his face-offs are terrible. I might also be able to get Stevenson here. He might be serviceable. But yeah, this might be a... We're having to retool on the fly here just because of the cap situation. Which isn't fun, but it's what has to be done here, basically. I'm still really upset about this Evander Kane situation. I really don't know why the heck it's, it's being like that. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense to me. After a 50-point season and a guy who's like 85 overall, why would he drop? So, don't know what's going on with that, but it's neither here nor there at this point. we got to just figure out what's going on here. Yeah, we don't even have a 
very competitive top six. Well, we do, if Vander Kane is any good. So there's our top six, but... So Gambrell will likely have to be third line with Sorensen and no LeBanc, no Donskoy. So Mello will fill in third or fourth line. And Letanov might actually have to make a debut here. Yeah, this is going to be uh, an interesting year, to say the least. Cup team, probably not. Competitive, yes. Like, we have our top four, and then top six with Wood as depth. Like, that's kind of what we're going to have to do. Depth forwards are going to be a bit trickier, which is kind of why I'm leaning towards picking up Chandler Stevenson. We have a bit of cash, and I'm... He is... Now, he is tendered, but it was only for 1.5. So, let's actually see what we would have to give up for that. Uh, your, this year's third round pick, which we do have... Uh, we might not have our own, which is an issue. We can trade for him and sign him. We do have our own, and it's not worth that much. We do have uh, Ottawa's instead, and that's not worth that much. So we could we can get away with that. Yeah, so let's let's go for that right now. And then I'll be able to get all the lines taken care of and stuff like that. I forget free agency doesn't exist over there anymore. Okay. Let's grab Chandler Stevenson here. Just for a year. Does it go down? Oh, beautiful. Ooh, we, we won't even have to pay anything if it's like this. One mil for one year. We won't have to pay a thing. So we could actually keep our pick, I believe. Yeah. Because it was like 1.2 to 1.8 was like the third, and then nothing else below that. Right? Yeah, no picks required if we do that. They could match it, though. And it's Washington. How much cash does Washington have? We might actually have to give it up. Because if Washington matches that, we are SOL for centers. Um, they don't have enough. Well, oh yeah, they don't have enough. They shouldn't be able to match. Well, they might be able to. Let's see, what was the... Uh, I might go way up to uh, just below what the... Uh, so, one point two four six so I can go like one point two two five and get him just to make sure that they won't be able to match that offer we won't be able to do any rentals at the deadline most likely but I guess we'll deal with it so Amela's on the uh yeah we do that we won't have to give up any compensation and Sumo's on a two-way, so that won't really matter. Let's offer him that contract. And I want to sim up a couple days, and then I'll figure out the scouts and the lines. But I want to make sure we can get this guy on the team. All right, that's the uh, two-way contract guy. Come on, Chandler. Ah, Sumella offered. They can actually match it. All right, I'm just going to blow through part of the preseason. Okay. Whew. Okay, they didn't match it. We got Chandler Stevenson. And now he's on our team. And now I will be able to do the lines and send out my scouts. So I will see you guys when I'm done with all that. Huh. Yo, I just... Why is Radim Shimmick a righty in this game? He's a lefty. How the hell did I not catch that? That's a trip. Oh, <laughs> I just noticed that. Why is he a righty? He's totally a lefty. That is hilarious. All right, well, anyway, back to business. All right, so these are what our lines are going to look like for this year. Meyer, Kachur, and Stone on the first line. Kane, Hurdle, Nyquist, second line. Sorensen, Stevenson, Carlson, uh, third line. Goodrow, Gambrell, and Radil on the fourth line. Defensively, Vlasic, Carlson, Dylan Burns, Shimmick, and DeMello. 
power play lines are going to go with Stone, Hurdle, Kane on that first one. Kane to just take some shots along with uh, Carlson and Burns take a lot of shots too. And second unit, Nyquist, Kutcher, Meyer, Carlson, and Vlasic. We don't really have another uh, guy who can go there. I mean, Sorensen is decent offensively. Uh, Gambr oh, actually, Gambrell could probably... You know what? Let's give Gambrell some power play time on that second unit. He might grow a little bit throughout this year, so let's put him up there. See how he does. But yeah, not the strongest. <laughs> There's the uh, four mans that we're going with. And you know what? Let me do one switch here, which I was going to do initially and forgot. Herp derp. There we are. Penalty kill, Stevenson, Carlson, Vlasic, Shimmick, Kachur, Hurdle, Dylan Burns. We'll see. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to do more, a lot more experimenting here again. So yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Here's the four on fours, Kachur and Stone, Carlson, Burns, Hurdle, Meyer, Vlasic, Dylan. Going to try to really stack those top things up. Although it might still be beneficial to... To make some minor switches, wouldn't it? Yeah, let's do that. And three on three. There we go. And you know what? I might still replace Vlasic here. With a forward. <laughs> but you know what? I won't do that. And goalies, scratches. We got Sumella and uh, Kyle Wood as depth. And there we have it. There's the... Uh, 2019-2020 San Jose Sharks roster. Really hoping that that Kane thing is a fluke and that he just goes right back up, but I don't know they will. I mean, he did great in the first game of preseason, but preseason's one thing. Our locker room chemistry is in the toilet. <laughs> so, yeah, let's see what happens here. And we don't really have any cash, no cap to work with. So kind of what you see is what you get. And until the deadline, we might be able to get a little bit of something, but it won't be anything major. Not going to be anything major, so. Let's see. Let's see if we get everyone. We can get everyone scouted here in this first little bit at least. So we can see if uh, that Evander Kane issue is real or not. I mean, preseason's going great. But preseason is preseason. I mean, if we could find ways to score it around three goals, four per game. And we have the, the same sort of offensive thing we had last year. I mean, we have a very good chance at the postseason. No question about that. I've already got my scouts. Get out. All right. Well, here's the real test. Regular season. One to nothing shutout loss in the first game. Five to four loss in the second. Not looking good. Not a great start. Really not a good, great start. Oh, man. <laughs> and now we can't keep the puck out of the net. As opposed to last year when we couldn't be stopped. Hopefully we fight our way back in. We're two, four, and one right now. Yeah. Not a great beginning. All right, don't have much uncovered yet, but let's keep looking. Yeah, really not much uncovered. Okay, minor injury for Mark Edward Vlasic. There we go. He's fighting our way back towards 500. Lost right there, but we get a point. Preds aren't doing too good. Looks like scoring is a bit of an issue. Yeah, but we now have a positive record, so the slow start is out. Like, can we beat a tough team like Pittsburgh? Maybe. Yikes. Brendan Dillon's injured. November 11th. It's not a horrible amount of time, but... Obviously not ideal. Kyle Wood gets to have fun. Yeah, figured we'd lose that. 5-5-2 five, five, and two to start off the season. Not in good shape. Yep. Five points out of a wild card spot. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, this team, man. You kind of have to really boost them up to make all those contracts worth it, like they kind like they are in real life, to get them to perform to this regard. All right, let's see. It's the team scouted. So, yeah, okay, Vander Kane's back to an 85, so we just got hit with a glitch. He's only got five points in 12 games, though. Hurl's up to a friggin' 89. He's not doing too well. Assists. 
and major assists. God damn, if I just had another guy to take face-offs, I could really optimize my lines better. I just, I don't have a shooter, if not for Couture on that first line. 14 shots in 12 games, not enough. 23 shots in 12, that's a bit better. We can try. We can try to switch hurdle and Couture here. And see if that does anything for us. Not sure that it will. But we'll see. Alright, we need to fight back into a playoff spot right now. We'll try that one little switch for our 5-on-5. Five five. And you know what, I might need, I need to check my power play too. I might have to optimize that one slightly better. Because I don't think it'll be good with these kind of numbers. Yeah, our goals for just plain and simple isn't good enough. Power play, it's not actually, it's actually not horrible. It's not amazing. Penalty kill's good. 5-on-5 five five scoring seems to be a big issue. But let's see uh, if these changes do anything. We'll see. Well, maybe mainly one change. But we'll see how it does. If it doesn't look good, then we switch it back. But Hurdle, man, I think he could do a good, good freaking job. But it's just, you got to find guys who can, who can play around him. And that's the thing. We got to be able to find more goals. Which right now, we are just continuing to struggle. And mostly it's goal scoring. Our goals against is fine, but we cannot put the puck in the net. And that is the issue right now. I mean, we're getting... Ooh, actually, Eric Carlson's off to a bit of a slower start this year. Come on now, first line. Need to get going. Need more, need more games like that where we get a lot of goals. There we go. Starting to pull it together now. There we are. That's a nice little stretch. Four-game win streak. We needed that. Winnipeg struggling yet again somehow. Chandler Stevenson, minor injury. There we are. Okay, are things coming together here in San Jose? They just might be. There we go. That's the Anaheim record we should have. And, of course, we lose to them. But we just handed Vegas a loss. I saw their loss call a move. Beat Anaheim this time. Thank you. Gave them a point, but it shouldn't matter. Beat Vegas again, please. Do it for me. Come on, Dylan. Injured again, December 8th. We really need him in the lineup. He helps that defense out a lot. We got to keep dealing with this crap. Kyle Wood's actually a 78, man. He got up there. Good for you. Another righty. It's not amazing defensively, but he'll do for now. All right. Well, we're 15-9-2, which is much, much better than what it looked like we were going to be when we started the season off. We're now second in the bit well. Three-way tie for second, only one point ahead of Vancouver, who has the last wild card spot. So it's a tight race right now. But Couture is doing what I expect him to do, getting some more goals because he shoots a lot. But I want to see what Hurdle's up to as well, especially on that first line that doesn't seem to have a lot of shooting. Maybe we're getting it from Carlson. Who knows? But some kind of goal score is needed. Locker room chemistry at 72% is pretty dang good. But let's do a complete overview here and see what's up. Goals four shot up. Yeah, that's, if that keeps getting better, we're in really good shape. Goals against, about where it needs to be. But yeah, if, our, if we can get our goals for up to about around three, we'll be in great shape. Power, power plays at 20%. Power plays performing well. Penalty kill dropped a lot, but I think that has, might have to do with some injuries. We'll see how if that continues to trend downwards or if it hops back up. We're 8-2-0 oh in the last 10. We're on a great stretch. Exactly what we needed. 8-6 and six on home ice, 7-3-2 on the road. So we need to keep winning games here, obviously. But production is where we want to see what's going on. What's up with the production? Couture, then Burns, and then Hurdle. At least Hurdle's getting some good uh, production. 20 points in 26 games played. Kane's at 19 points in 26 games played. He's shooting a lot, but he's not capitalizing a ton. But whatever, just get him a bunch of points. Maybe we can get him some stat growth. That'd be great. Timo Meyer, 17 points in 26 games played. Nyquist was 16. Gambrell's got 13. He's doing very well in the power play. Stone's only got 12 points. <laughs> Don't do that to me. Don't be bad. It's 
So first line kind of still iffy. Burns and Carlson minuses for Carlson and Vlasic. Burns and Carlson still collecting a lot of points, a lot, a lot of goals as well. And Jones, a bit of an average start here. Dell's been very good for us, which is awesome. If Jones can get a tiny bit better, then we'll be in really good shape. Yeah, Carlson and Vlasic being minuses are it's a tiny bit worrying. And Stone not producing is obviously very worrying. Maybe it's because two power, power forwards on that line. I might put Evander Kane onto the top line and Timo Meyer onto the second. Spread that. Although Evander Kane is a power forward in this game. Forgot. Or in this update, whatever. He's been changed. Or maybe I made that change at some point, but. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I might need some uh, ideas then because he's on the top power play unit. He's on the top line. The, pa the fact might be that, you know, Carlson and Burns are producing so heavily that it takes away from him. But we need him still to produce. That's quite obvious. We can also do that. Put Nyquist up there. But then that gives us that same thing of two power forwards on here, which worked for us last year a little bit. And I wasn't as good on that second line, though. But we can try something like that out. Two hybrids with Stone, who looks like more pure playmaker. And Couture with Kane and Meyer. Might work. Yeah, we're not going to get too much depth scoring this year. But we're going to have to rely on our uh, <laughs> our offensive defenseman for that, mostly. So that's an idea of something we do to maybe try to optimize our 5-on-5 five five more, get Stone going. Or maybe since we were trending upwards, maybe we don't touch it. You know, because we were... We were looking like we were moving upwards, so maybe we don't touch it for now and see if Stone will get going on his own more. And keep in mind that Carlson and Burns are quote-unquote taking points away or can be considered to be doing that. Yeah, Carlson got some uh, statistical growth, so he's even better now. Burns got some as well, so he's even better now. Timo Meyer, that stat plus is from last year. Gustav as well. Yep, statistical growth, so that's nice for us. Looks like Jones got a tiny bit of stack growth as well, except it's literally not reflected anywhere. Cool. All right. In the system here, we're looking for some growth. And it looks like we got it. Semon's grown a bit. Other than that, though, not a whole lot. Vitaly has grown a tiny bit. Holden and Wakabayashi is the one that is really good for us. Yeah. Solid. Yeah, not... Still, Merkley needs to grow more. Shmielewski's in good shape. Hopefully he'll start growing as well. Coronar, too. Yeah. I mean, we'll get... I think I think we're, we're starting to... Starting to get things going here, but the whole retooling on the fly is tough with such cap problems, but we're 15-9-2 now 
we're on the way back up. It's going to be, you know, a tough ride to make the playoffs. We got to keep trending upwards. We got to keep trying to optimize these lines to be as good as they can be. All at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Gambrell is actually third line scoring line, but with that power play time, that should be enough. That third line are all minuses. Fourth line are doing better. So maybe I switch Gambrell and Stevenson. And maybe Gambrell with Sorensen will give us a bit more offensive touch because he's, he could give us some more depth goal scoring if we move Gambrell up there. Carlson, you can't say much about him. He's the defensive dynamo on that line. But Sorensen with 285s, Gambrell with 88s. I mean, that could work. Sorensen, as I recall, at least from last year, took... I uh, know, oh it was a little bank taking shots. That's right. Does Gambrell... Not a whole lot. No one's really a shot taker on there. So, whatever. But I think I should still make that move. Because that, that third line would minus us right now. If we can get him to maybe get a bit more production, that should help that out. Kutcher is coming, uh, coming off an injury, trying to recover. So, yeah, what do you guys think? What other optimizations would you like to see for these lines? I like that change. And maybe if we're, maybe I shouldn't make the move of getting someone else on that first line to maybe help out Stone until it looks like we stagnate with our offensive production. If we continue to trade up, uh, trend upwards, then maybe we want to keep it as it is right now. So we'll, we'll consider that. We'll, we'll have to see. All right, guys. So that will take care of it. New Year's underway. We're right now in a playoff spot, but it's a tight division. So we've got to create some separation between ourselves and others and win those big, uh, big divisional games, like a big one coming up with Calgary. Although I don't think... No, they're not really in the hunt. So games against LA, Arizona, Vancouver, uh, not so much Vegas anymore, but Edmonton too. Like those are all big. That loss against Edmonton was pretty huge. As you can see, like they, we would have had 34 points and they still would have had 33. We would have freaking leapfrogged them right there. But alas, we are in second in a very, very close <laughs> divisional race. So, all right, guys, that'll take care of it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to leave that like and I'll see you in the next one. Watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you. Be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow. And you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.